E ona mai kloria ki te atua ati hei Māori ora. Nau mai, hari mai ki tēnei whare karakia, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Good morning, school. Welcome, welcome to chapel, welcome to chapel on this very special charity day. Please be seated. E noho. So, a powerful theme for us this morning, which Arjun's going to lead for us. Theme on self-doubt, about how we manage that, how we deal with that, and we all know what those voices are like when we hear them about being not enough or not good enough, and Arjun's going to open that up for us this morning and explore that with us, and we're looking forward to that. So thank you to you, Arjun. So let's go to our opening responses. The Lord be with you. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Kinoitato, the prayer of the day. God in Trinity, creator, saviour, giver of life and truth, reveal the possibilities within us that we may attain to the fullness of our humanity. Hear this prayer for your love's sake. Amen. E tuatua tokotolu, te kaihanga, te whakaa kogora, te kaiho mai i a onangara me te pono, whakaria mai nga puna nawa, kei rutu i tene i tene a matu, ki tai atu e matu, ki te pū wainatanga, o te tangata. Pakalongo ki tene e noe i runa i to araha. Amen. Our first waiata, our himine for this morning. We practiced this yesterday and it went really well. So let's sing best of our ability this morning that great Easter song, Thine Be the Glory. Let's stand and sing and give it some nice volume. A reading of Exodus, chapters 3, verse 9 to 12. God said, Now the cry of the Israelites has reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now, go. I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, 
I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Here ends the reading. Story of the day. A boy and his shadow. A boy had a shadow that would speak to him. The shadow would say terrible things to the boy, putting him down at every opportunity. You can't do this. Why even try? As the days went on, the boy started to slowly believe the shadow. One day, the boy was having lunch all by himself, and there was a group of kids nearby. He thought about talking to them. However, the shadow was quick to shut him down. They don't want you there. Don't even try. But then someone sat next to him. It was a person from the group he saw. They talked and the person took the boy to their group. They welcomed him with open arms. As he stayed with the group longer, the shadow became quieter and quieter until one day it was silent. If it wasn't obvious already, the boy's shadow is his self-doubt, the voice in his head that tells him he can't. Self-doubt can be the crushing point for the indecisive and the self-conscious. If left unchecked, it may consume you, eat you up and spit you out, leading you to think horrible thoughts about yourself which are just plain false. In the Bible, after Moses had run away from Egypt, he had to grapple with self-doubt. A man who had left Egypt as an outlaw, who is now just a plain old farmer, was supposedly going to free his people from slavery. He doubted that. When God spoke to to Moses through the burning bush, Moses expressed his doubt with God, simply asking, who am I that I should go into the Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And God only responded with, I will be with you. Fun fact, this has a proper name aside from self-doubt, is known as imposter syndrome. By definition, it means doubting your abilities and feeling like a fraud. You could achieve something incredible, but that voice, that one voice in your head may just come by and tell you, you could have done better, or why don't you do better than so-and-so. You might be hanging out with some people, and the voice may well say, you're not good enough to be with these people. Most will just brush it off. It's just a silly thought. But to some, maybe even a few in this chapel, that voice has gone to them. I'll give you a personal example. At the start of the term, I was informed I would be a part of this incredible group of people. I'm sure you know them all by now. To put it lightly, I was stoked. But the the moment the first meeting came around, I had a look at every single person there, and one thought went through my mind. You don't belong. I let my mind eat away at the thought that I wasn't good enough to be among these incredible people. That was up until an, an interaction a couple weeks ago. Now, admittedly, I'm not an extremely social person to the point where I still run into year 13s that I have never met or talked to despite them being here for at least three years. One of these people were another prefect. I'd never, talk, I'd never even talked to them up until this point, but all they told me was, you're doing great. Now, obviously, there was a bit more depth to the conversation, but that's the only part I remember, and that's the only part I need to remember. That piece of encouragement made me feel like I belonged. All it took was someone else's belief for the voice to silence. Connecting back to the Bible, in Moses' darkest moment, when he doubted himself, God came to him and just said they would be there with him. And that's all he needed to, to believe in himself. So what's my point? My point is, we all have a voice in the deep, dark part of our mind that tries to bring us down some deal with it to the point where they don't even notice it, others, not so much. If you're on the latter, my best advice for you is to seek help from someone you know closely or that you trust, because chances are they believe in you and that belief is all you need. Because at the end of the day, if a real life voice says you can do it, who cares what an imaginary one thinks? I'll leave you with this quote Nelson Mandela used once. Our deepest fear is is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us. We ask ourselves, 
Who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. You plain small doesn't serve the world. You are loved. You are enough. Keep being you. Thank you. now bow our heads in prayer. Dear Lord, we come before you today acknowledging the presence of self-doubt in our hearts and minds. Guide us so we may move forward with strength to overcome this feeling and find confidence in ourselves. We come before you with a heavy heart, recognizing the harm that self-doubt has potentially caused in our lives. It hindered our growth, causes us to miss opportunities, and has, potential, and has potentially hindered our relationships with others. For doubting the potential that you have placed within us, we ask you for forgiveness. We ask for your help to overcome self-doubt. Give us the courage to face our fears and the strength to push through moments of doubt. We pray for your guidance and wisdom to see ourselves as you see us to appreciate our strengths and acknowledge our weaknesses. Lord, we ask that you renew confidence in all of us. Help us to see the potential that you have placed within, to embrace our unique gifts and to use them for your glory. We pray that we may live each day with the assurance that comes from knowing that we are loved by you and that we are capable of great things. Finally, Lord, we thank you for your unwavering love and faithfulness towards us. Thank you for hearing our prayers and for walking with us through the challenges of life. We trust in your promises and know that you will help us overcome self-doubt and lead us to a place of confidence and peace. Amen. We now have time for silent prayer and reflection. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we pray together in Te Reo. E tō mātou, mātou i te rangi, ki a tapu tō ingoa, ki a tāe mai tō rangatiratanga, ki a mētia tau rapai ai, ki runga ki te whenua, ki a rite anō ki tō te rangi, hō mai ki a mātou ai ene, he taro mā mātou mō tēnei rā, murua o mātou hara, mi mātou hoki e muru nei, I o te hunga e hara ana ki a mātou. Aua hoki mātou e kāwea ki a whakawaia. E ngāri whako rangia mātou i te kino. No hoki te rangatiratanga, te kaha, me te kororia. Ake, ake, ake. Āmine. Kia ora, I think what we've just prayed together is a good example of what Arjun was talking about. I can remember a couple of years ago when there were lots of voices saying we can't pray the Lord's Prayer in Tuleo as a school community and now you pray that prayer with just as much volume and meaning and as, as, as much significance as we would pray it in English, which I think is fantastic. It just goes to show that we can achieve these things with a little bit of belief. Thank you, Arjun, for what you gifted us today very powerful message about believing in ourselves, about hearing that still small voice of God, not the shadow, but that still small voice of God saying to us, you actually, you are enough, you are awesome, you've got this. Believe in yourself. You are my son, my daughter, I love you. It's those simple things. Believe in that and be inspired. Be inspired by what Arjun's gifted us today. And somebody who I know, and he's been quite candid in his reflections this morning as well, that's something that he's had to negotiate, like us all, from time to time. Believe you me, Arjun, you were earning that leadership position back in year nine. You've been fantastically consistent in this space for four and a bit years now. So congratulations, well done. Thank you for encouraging us this morning with our doubts and 
more importantly, to get us to believe in ourselves. Round of applause. A couple of notices, really. A couple of big services coming up. As our headmaster, Mr. Skeen, mentioned yesterday, Sunday night is our Garden of Remembrance service. It is an important service. It's probably one of our biggest services of the year, certainly in terms of getting it organised and planned. We've got a significant guest list coming. And effectively, we are... Lowering the screens. Effectively, we are remembering those staff members and students who tragically and sadly and unexpectedly in many cases passed away, died while they were a student here or a staff member here. It's, uh, it's quite a poignant service and it's also an opportunity for all of us who have known grief and loss to recall those with thanksgiving, recall those with gratitude that we've loved and lost over the years and also want to remember at this service. It's an opportunity for us to light candles of, of remembrance, of memory and, and to gather as a community to do that on Sunday evening. There will be a number of families who are, um, we're still in contact with from the students whose names are on that wall of remembrance and the year nine students have just recently gone through that class and they consider those young people and the lives they led and the lives that were cut short and, and sadly how they died as well. There's so many terrible, tragic accidents there as well. And as I, but as I say to them, as we consider the sadness of that space and place, there's also hope there and we talk about how life continues and people are able to rebuild their lives and find new hope new meaning and new direction and new relationships in some cases so it's a, a good service to be a part of and I encourage you all to really join in heartily with that on on sunday evening next week uh we've got our easter service as well that's on thursday and that's our annual event where our houses are encouraged to come forward with their Easter joke or their joke, the house joke competition. It needs to be an appropriate joke. It needs to be checked by your housemaster and given the thumbs up before its delivery for obvious reason. And it will be judged impartially by our famous laughometer. And uh, we'll be using that on Thursday. So that's our Easter service next week so in your house groups make sure you get your jokes ready why do we tell jokes at easter well i'll tell you that on thursday and that's the message easter is no yoke after all so that's the message and theme for next week service opportunities today is our sort of inaugural in many ways charity fundraising day thank you to all those who've been involved organizing your stalls in your houses we've got some food stalls we've got some activity events all around lunchtime um, the money we raised today through not wearing uniform, and I can't see anybody in uniform from here, so hopefully that's $5 at least per person, which is fantastic. Um, that money will be going to uh, the SERV, which feeds people in poor housing or people with food insecurity, uh, people in homelessness situations, and they'll be going to a special Easter meal for them. And the other 50% will be going to Canteen. That's an amazing charity at work in New Zealand. We'll be supporting the Waikato branch of Canteen. That's supporting teenagers who are having to live with cancer and all that that involves. So a really, really important charity to support. So that's today. Uh, the, the setting up is after period four, and then an email's gone out, just a couple of members from each house to get involved with that setting up. So we're ready to go at 12.45 today. Cambodia, uh, this screen's not working, very disconcerting. Applications have closed now. We've had 33 applications, so that's a huge number. Um, so we, we're not sure how many will be taken. I don't think we can take that many. There's going to be a shortlisting tonight. Obviously, probably one of the things that will have a bearing on that is the quality of your application form. Some spent more time and thought on their forms than others, so that will play a part. If you've just scribbled it down quickly, uh, it might be something you come to regret. Um, in that space, we've got one form here that's got no name on. I'd hate for you to miss out on the opportunity of going. I've sent a number of electronic messages out about this, but it's been hard to identify. It's somebody who's got experience with a kids' church program called Tribe. They're not a fussy eater, and they will talk to their friends who've been missionaries. So hopefully that 
targets that that person will just know, ah, that's mine. Didn't put my name on. If that's yours, please stay behind and see me in my office after chapel today. Rock program going well. Thank you, Year 12s. And again, another plug. Sponsor forms, Mr. Constable's prepared, and they'll be going out with their borders as we support that charity relay. And that was, of course, the first week of term two on the Sunday. Lots of notices there, and we've got heaps of time. So let's just bow our heads and just refresh our thinking and our thoughts and minds after all those notices with Arjun's message. As we each navigate the territory of doubt, doubt in ourselves. Let us encourage each other and encourage ourselves this morning to believe that we are enough. So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Atamata, the Tamata, Waru, Tapu, be upon us, those we love, those we care for, those we pray for, this day and all our days. Amen. We're going to stand now at two. We're going to sing a couple of verses of <clears throat> one of our songs for Sunday night, I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. Didn't make a bad job of Thine Be the Glory. I think we were slightly behind the organ. We need to follow the organ notes and the tune and let our voices match with that. In respect of our voices, half of the house behind William's house, I don't know which house that is, but you want your mouths closed. Okay, you need to actually open your mouths to sing, not just stand there looking mute. We can see you from here. So let's all give it a good bit of effort and let's sing and... Thank you, Mr. Dunlop. I, the Lord of Sea and Sky. I just think we need a couple of individual house singing practices. So let's conclude the service with our words of grace from St. Paul in Tileo and in English. 
Kia tau, kia tato katoa, te atawhai o te tato ariki aihu karaiti, me te araha o te atua, me te whiwhina taitanga, ki te waru o tapu, ake, 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 amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever, amen. So let's go in the love of God, the peace of Christ and the dignity of of the Holy Spirit. Be strong, be happy, be holy, and have a fantastic charity day. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Dunlop. <laughs>